Are you experiencing high turnover or having trouble keeping your top talent? That's what we're gonna cover in this week's tip. Three tips to help you reduce turnover, keep your team, and keep them motivated. Tip number one, do you have a well-stated vision or purpose for your practice that you are consistently conveying to your team members? If not, this might be something that you should look into and get worked out. We want to start this at the very beginning of the onboarding process where once you hire them or even during the interview, you're, you're touching on this point of what you're trying to achieve as a practice owner and really tying it to your purpose to help others. We're looking for people who are looking for something that's more than just a job where they can actually help others and make an impact in your community, just like you want to do through your practice. So it's really critical that at the very beginning, even in that interview, you're discussing this purpose and this vision. The guys who maybe aren't necessarily interested in that are, and are more interested in their paycheck and being able to just do the nine to five and leave, aren't necessarily going to respond to that. And you'll see that in the conversation. So just by introducing that in the very beginning, you're going to start selecting out those guys who really love helping and want to make a true impact. And those types of employees are going to want to go above and beyond naturally because it's tied to a bigger purpose than just a paycheck. Beyond that, when you're onboarding them, you wanna make sure it's actually a written statement that they can see, they can refer to, that you're mentioning in your staff meetings or monthly meetings with your team members to remind them why they're doing what they're doing. It's highly motivating and it also makes it a lot easier for you to ask them to do what they need to do to help you achieve that, whether that's making additional reactivation phone calls or sending that email blast or being insistent with a patient before they leave that they need to schedule their ne next hygiene appointment. If we are only pushing the actions without the purpose, the actions become uh, a little bit monotonous, a little bit robotic, and we start to lose the spirit of why we do what we do and why your patients are coming to you to begin with. So it's really, really critical that we have that in place. Everything else follows from that initial purpose that you are setting up your team with. Tip number two uh, would be if we're expecting a ton from our employees, are we showing up as leaders? Are you showing up as a leader? Are you showing up on time? for your morning huddle. You're there, you're present, you're prepared. You're putting in the energy in every consult or exam that you're doing. Are you providing the roadmaps for your team members, the training, the understanding, the communication that they need uh, to feel that they have the guidance they need to be able to do their jobs well, and also the clarity of what they need to be doing to um, ensure they're fulfilling their role in your practice. So showing up, uh, very, very simple, but also very critical. And sometimes we don't think about that. We think, gosh, you know, first patient shows up at nine, I'll be there at 9.30 uh, ready for the exam. Great for the patient if it's a 30 minute process to check in, fill out the paperwork, et cetera. But for your team, you need to be there at 8.45 so that you can coordinate what you guys will be doing for that day. Again, going over, what are we gonna achieve today with regard to our purpose? How are we going to help uh, our patients in our community today and also hit our targets, which align with that vision or with that purpose. So if you're not getting there early enough to have those conversations, your team is likely going to feel a bit out of alignment. They're gonna feel as though they don't really have the guidance and the clarity that they need uh, to achieve the purposes of the practice. So now we have, we have the vision. We have you showing up as a leader. The third tip is going to be to make sure that you are providing checklists, you are providing benchmarks, and providing metrics to track for each position that then you can follow up with on a daily basis and also enhance uh, with training. So this particular point, there's a lot to it, obviously, checklists and benchmarks and metrics. We will do a separate tip on that and provide some handouts for you um, where we can walk you through how to implement those 
and how to utilize them within the practice. It's a whole tip on its own, really, and so we're gonna dedicate some time to that. But that's tip number three, is to know that you should have those. If you've created them, but you're just not utilizing them, bring them out, dust them off, start implementing them. Um, and if you have any questions on how they should be designed or if the metrics you're keeping are correct, feel free to reach out to us. We're gonna be more than happy to answer those questions for you. But here's bonus tip number four. Make sure you are acknowledging your team members. You're acknowledging their contributions and their wins. Studies show that employees are 60% more likely to be engaged and 40% less likely to leave the organization when they feel recognized for their contributions. This does not have to be a big deal. It can be a written note that you write for them, thanking them for their really great performance. It could be a Starbucks or a lunch that you provide for them for a job well done or even a highlight at your next staff meeting. It's really, really critical that you're acknowledging their wins and making them feel recognized for what they are doing because studies show they're gonna to wanna to stick around and perform even better and go above and beyond. Those are my tips for you, I hope that helps. If you'd like to follow us and have more tips just like this one, hit the subscribe button below. We'll see you in the next one.